Good evening. Tuesday, December 14th, 2021, here in Sarasota, Florida, 8.04 p.m. I'm going to jump right into this, and this is still being sort of the structure of it is still, it's very loose, and it's going to take me probably about four videos, I ascertain, to really find the flow. But essentially, each video is going to pick up from the previous one and then lead into the next one. And in the description of each video, I will link the episode previous. And once it's recorded, I will list and link the episode that follows this current one. This one is called Discernment and Empowerment. I'm going to try to keep these as close to 15, 16 minutes as I can. But again, it's probably going to take me a few recordings to get into the flow. In today's recording, before I jump into more of the specifics of this nebulous thing that I've alluded to in beginning with yesterday's video, I wanted to address why. Why am I sharing this publicly? Why am I sharing something so deeply personal um, in such a public manner? And the short answer is, you can't bullshit the universe. You can't bullshit God or creation. You can't fake this anymore. You can't fake being truthful and being spiritual and being real and authentic. You can't fake it. And as each day goes on, the ability to be faking it and getting away with it is getting harder and harder. And for those with the discernment, you can see right through and feel the bullshit, but it does take experience with it to be able to see it. And the first of the two reasons why I'm doing this publicly is calling bullshit on myself. <laughs> I've been saying the words that I don't care what every, anybody else thinks. I've been really saying it for the past two years, but my life and what has transpired up until this point is still demonstrating to me that I am still very much caring up until this point, still was very much caring, despite not wanting to, caring about how something I'm saying or what I'm doing or what I'm choosing to do. It has been one of my greatest weaknesses this entire life, as I alluded to yesterday. Lifetime people pleaser, lifetime harmony maker, you know, not somebody that likes to disrupt and upset people. So you can say the words, but it's a whole nother thing to live the words that you say. And doing this this way, it holds me accountable to me. It holds me accountable to me because this time I am determined to break through and I will not break through if I get stuck on caring about anything external to me. As I said yesterday, this is about me. This is about me honoring me. This is about me giving myself voice. And this is not just giving myself from my wounded child and wounded woman voice, which as I said yesterday, will be a part. This is more about giving myself a voice for the work that I have been doing for nine years and how much I have in place and how ready I am for these projects to get off the ground. And they are not projects that serve just me. Intended in them is to serve as many as possible. And I just will not be able to stand in that version of myself and be the best version of me until and unless I for real get through really not caring about how somebody's going to react or not react positively or negatively. So for the for next 28 days, I am, I am on hyper focused on me, myself, and I to work through and to say and to honor what wants to come through. So that's the first thing. Not bullshitting myself anymore with the words of, I don't care. I'm really taking this time and this 28 days to prove to myself 
that finally I really am living that and able to live that and act in a way that demonstrates that I don't care. The second reason I am doing this publicly is because I have been introduced in the past 19 or so months to two communities, online communities, okay? And there is some overlap, like a Venn diagram. There's an intersection with these communities, but they, they do have segments, I would say, that are distinct. You've got the truth community, the truth movement, and then you've got the spiritual community. Now, all of this is new to me. I haven't had a TV since I moved to Sarasota in 2008. 2008, I have not owned a TV. I have literally deprogrammed myself for almost 13 years now because I have not taken in hardly any, not even media, not even like movies, entertainment, or sports. So when this happened, this pandemic, I knew something big was happening and I knew I had to dial back in to the world of information. And I sure as hell wasn't getting it from the mainstream. So I gravitated to YouTube and to all the various, these truthers and these spiritual people. And I've been studying and I've been taking in and I didn't come to any of it with any, I, don't, I didn't know any of these various perspectives or storylines or any of this information. In general, I definitely knew that after 9-11, shit was a lot, there was a lot more going on than what we were being told. I went down the rabbit hole then. I didn't really need any more convincing that of what, you know, of the bigger picture of there's some evil, small group of evil billionaire jackasses that are controlling things across the globe. But I definitely didn't know the magnitude of it. I didn't know the breadth of it. I didn't know anything about anything really, because I had been dialed out for a decade and fully focused on being the change that I wished to see in the world. So the past 19 months, I've been studying these communities and studying these people and not, I'm not, it's like, I've said this before, I'm on everybody's team and I'm on nobody's team. I am a truly independent sovereign being even before all this stuff started. I think for myself, I decide for myself and I'm out there living it and making choices and taking risks with big stuff in my life to learn these lessons. So I have taken in a lot of personalities, a lot of different storylines, and really just tried to triangulate it to figure out what the hell is really going on and how to, how to next move. And what I have found, that there is no doubt that both of these communities are rife with infiltration, misinformation, misrepresentation and manipulation, to, to name a few things. And these things are going on at multiple dimensions, like literally on multiple dimensions. And to make it even more convoluted, it's being executed across the spectrum from zero to no conscious awareness, to complete and full conscious awareness. It's a, it is a jungle out there. It is a field full of landmines in trying to discern truth, trying to discern who really is as spiritual as the words coming out of their mouth, who really is living these words and who's just talking it. What is really going on in the world around us? What are the motives and intentions of those in control with censorship happening left, right, up and down, which to me is a glaring indicator of how serious a situation we face. And as if it wouldn't be hard enough to have anybody in that world consciously manipulating and taking advantage no, nah, there's no, there's no room for that. And starting on August 1st, I began an online course with a gentleman that probably would identify in both of those communities. And my experience was less than positive. It was less than positive. And 
I tried many, many, many times to reach out to him directly as an equal. And more on that, much more on that will be shared. But the reason I feel compelled to share all of this past four months of what has transpired within me and at the deep levels of things triggered in my in my physical world and things ignited and triggered in the unseen, in my intuitive, in my insight and in my heart and what I'm feeling and the misalignments that I was experiencing. I'm sharing the process because it's the overriding process and everybody, listen, I'm not saying that everybody has experienced this gentleman in the same way. In fact, quite the opposite, which is one of the reasons this is so challenging for me because I'm in a huge minority with regards to what my individual experience was, but that makes it even more important to share, to help others. So that maybe, maybe, if you're vibing with anything that I'm saying, then you'll get more familiar and more intimate with who I am, what my work is, and what, why I was triggered and what, and why, It'll make more sense as the videos proceed. And it's just, it's just among other things, sharing a lesson, a enormous lesson of learning discernment at a pretty high cost. Financially, emotionally, spiritually, every, every way imaginable, I was affected. The second overriding point I wanted to make today as I lead into starting tomorrow, I will begin directly talking about the experience, but I wanted to set the stage of where I was on my own when this class started, on my own. I had been existing as a legal business for almost nine years. My little company of me launched officially in the state of Florida on January 1st, 2013. My parent company name is Allison Irene Nune LLC, and I have five DBAs doing business as is. I've been the real deal in terms of I am really working towards building a very different company for nine years. I've had a YouTube channel for over eight years at the time when this course started, tracking my entire journey. Early on, didn't have much discernment at all. But simultaneously, I was so empowered and confident when this first started. And you will learn more of that story as we proceed through the next 28 days. But my YouTube channel and nine years of history is right there for anybody to verify who I am and how consistent I have been with what I've been sharing, the vision that I have, everything that's been coming through me has been coming through me for that entire time that my YouTube channel has been in existence and is right there as proof for anybody to see. I have oodles of book material. I came into the class with oodles of book material already written my own words because my company started as a written blog post on November 30th, 2012. Very purposely it started because it was online and I could a month before my legal, my business would become legal and for the first four months, I wrote 15 to 1800 word blog posts, almost on a daily basis, which I always knew would be and serve as a foundation for some of my first books. So I had a ton of material to already use or reflect upon. When the pandemic started, I knew I had to step up my game and really get my world of work a lot more clear to people and, and really start to find a project or projects to really encase the bigger vision and what I've been doing and, and, and to piece together all the work I had been doing up, at, up until that point for eight plus years. My podcast called Best Damn Reality launched on July 4th, 2020, very purposely on July 4th. The first 12 episodes of Best Damn Reality specifically laid out my unique marketing plan for my huge project called Ripple 2020. The website, ripple2020.world, well, it hasn't 
been touched since I started the course, but it was about 70% done and it is already live. You can go and check that out. That was about 70% done and existed pretty much in the exact form that it is today when I started this class. And I also had taken the time to set up a Patreon account. I don't have any Patreons, but I do have an account that's up and live for when and if anybody wants to begin to support me in that way. All of these things were in place before I started this course. Now, we had to make the decision to join this course with about 48 hours notice. He announced it, and then it was starting like two days later, which looking back was still, <laughs> was the first it, like red flag within me that I ignored. I don't particularly like making $499 isn't a ton of money, but in my world, that is a huge amount of money. It is a huge amount of money. I've been operating on an extremely limited budget since the launching of my company. So I made the decision impulsively. And because of that, I didn't have any conscious expectations. I didn't know consciously what assumptions I was entering the class or even really what I was, I was really following an intuition, especially because this guy had come to me specifically in meditation, the thought of him and inspired a specific podcast months before the course would be announced. And to me, all of that is signs. I've been doing nothing but living and following synchronicity in my own life for nine years and knowing when something is being, well, it's all being divinely guided, but knowing when and how to feel and follow synchronicities. I had done one whole podcast episode that was, again, intuition. It was something that came to me in meditation, and I will be speaking to that in future episodes here and bringing that back up. But when it was like I foresaw that I was going to get close to this guy, close as you, anybody can get in an online scenario, in an internet scenario. And so I knew that played hugely in my impulsive decision to take this course. But I can tell you one thing. I absolutely positively had my own game going and very well developed. And I knew who I was, and I knew what I was bringing to the table as a 3D business and, and, and as a very strong, independent woman in the third dimension and holding a vision for something enormously out of this world and having held that vision for over eight years and really close to my breakthrough point. So I didn't need much. I didn't need much from this course. And the exact opposite ended up happening. The exact opposite, absolutely derailed, absolutely. I will get into that. But the fact that it was so unbelievably brought me into the dark night of the soul was sort of shocking and certainly unexpected to me. And like I said yesterday, it has taken every bit of four months to feel and to experience and to analyze and to be real about my energies, but to also understand that the intuitions I'm picking up on, those aren't being pulled out of nowhere and they're definitely not based on nothing. Tomorrow we will be laying out all the facts of the interactions, the facts first. The third thing I wanted to lay out in today's episode is I wanted to just kind of share what have I been doing since the pandemic started, right? Because a lot of people in the truther community and the spiritual community, I personally tend to lean towards and trust and believe the ones that have a breadth of work and uh, something public prior to this, because this has been, like I said, ample opportunity to take advantage. And there are many, many out there taking advantage, taking advantage of those less aware, taking advantage of the, of the energy that so many people have of fear and worry, but yet they're proclaiming to be something else. 
And so I wanted to kind of say, like, what have I been doing since the pandemic? You know, like a lot of people started YouTube's channels and things because they lost jobs, because they were in quarantine, because certain countries were a lot worse than America has been, and certainly in Florida. Now, the three things I feel like need to be highlighted that are essential and key and that will come back around in future episodes during these next 28 days. The first thing I did that was hugely uncomfortable and extremely challenging was I accepted unemployment for nine months from the state of Florida. Never have I accepted government aid like that. Never. It was extremely uncomfortable because I am about living what I believe and I don't believe in any of these systems. I've been speaking out against and with constructive criticism of all these systems for years. And I've also been working to not just talk shit about it, but to actually pitch ideas to try to be something different. So it was very hard for me to agree to accept nine weeks of unemployment, but I'm in the event world and I had left the farm, which I'll get to in a second, and I had put all my earning eggs in my event world basket for 2020. I had an unprecedented year with Iron Man plant, an unprecedented year. And when this shit hit, events were the first thing to go. And I knew instantly my entire year of income was gone. And again, I operate on a very slim budget. And to lose my job would be depleting most of my savings in, in, a, in a short period of time. If I, if I didn't take the unemployment. So very reluctantly, I did. And I am glad that I did because I jumped in towards the end of that like 600 dot, like when it was a lot, it was a pretty good amount of money. So it saved, it saved me financially. It really did from having to dip too much into my savings because simultaneously or right after unemployment, I got back to the farm. I went back to the farm, the farm. If you look on my YouTube channel, there's a playlist dedicated specifically to the farm. It's only got three videos, but I speak about the farm all the time. And anybody that knows me in my real personal life knows about my history with the farm. The farm has, oh, I mean, where do you start with the farm? Jessica Stand is an organic, five acre organic farm here in town. Bill, our farmer, is the real deal. This 73 year old hippie guy, has been growing organically and dedicated his entire existence to his farm and to trying to do right by the earth and growing food in this community and providing food for over 40 years. And I have been involved in some way, shape or form for 13 years. The most recent thing, what I do now is I operate the business. And I'm gonna tell you, it is not, it's not a huge business, but it's not super small either. About 1.4 million gross sales we do, approximately. And I run the business side. And it's absolutely, positively maddening beyond words because our hippie farmer is a hippie farmer. I love him, but it is an insane place to work because it is not in any way, shape, or form a regular 3D business. Not even close. I wouldn't exactly call it a fifth dimensional or futuristic type business yet either. It's pretty apropos to call it like fourth dimension because there's just insane energy. And even our shoppers can't fully understand the uniqueness of this place. You actually have to work there. And I would argue you got to work there for a couple of years to even begin to wrap your head around how different this place is. And for me, somebody that... I don't, ident I'm on everybody's team and nobody's team. I don't identify with any group. You know, I can align and, and, and harmonize with almost anybody and ask, because I can find aspects of myself in every situation. But I definitely don't align to a lot of the, let's just say it's a very challenging place for me to work. So, but I am wholly grateful that it was still, and it desperately needed me to come back when all this started. So as soon as unemployment ran out, I went back to the farm and I've been employed there ever since. And I'm running, I run the office and I do all sorts of things there and almost all of it behind the scenes. But I share that because these people that are out there talking about fifth dimension, fifth dimensional things, 
but yet then are very clearly revealing themselves to still be doing things in the old third dimensional way. I, I don't I don't quite understand that. And I am going to call bullshit on that because I have been, I am working in a place that is clearly not same old, same old, clearly not. So is my company, but my company hasn't made any money. So I haven't yet had the opportunity to demonstrate to what degree I can operate and manage a business of that magnitude on my own. Because trust me, I would not be operating the farm any way the way that it's currently operated if it was, if it was up to me. But it's not up to me and I don't want to run the farm. All I'm trying to do is keep it open because we've been hanging on by the hair of our chinny chin chin for like five years. So all I'm trying to do is keep it open and doing it with unbelievable challenges. But I think that speaks volumes, having that experience, it's real, it's every day. And it's one of the reasons too, why my world of work isn't full, more fully off the ground. Do you know what it's like to run somebody else's business without him really even participating or, it, 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 it's very challenging to get my stuff off the ground while I spend 28, 30 hours a week there trying to keep it alive. So I share those things just to give a little bit. I know this video probably not nearly as interesting as the other one. Again, I don't care, but I am done playing small. I'm done playing small. And at four foot, 11 and three quarters, I swear to God, not a day goes by where my height is not commented upon. Not so much now, but when I was on the Ironman circuit, when I was traveling, literally, it is very and has been challenging for me to be taken seriously because I am literally like this little, this little person running around to, to be taken seriously with an idea like the ones that I have. I am definitely respected in my work worlds because I work my ass off and you'd never guess that I was four eleven and three quarters, but to be taken seriously in my own world of work, which has been challenging because it isn't a regular business. It is a business of where we're going, the fifth dimensional and beyond. So I'm done playing as small as I am, as hard as that's gonna be given that I'm physically small. I am also done dancing around what I call the earthbound masculine and feminine egoic energies. I'm done. I'm done tiptoeing around, whether it's the masculine energy that, you know, as long as you play, <laughs> I'm not gonna go into details about the assessment of, again, the experiences that I've had. And remember, earthbound masculine and feminine, divine masculine and feminine. This is where I'm going, this is where we're all going, is to evolve into balanced, energies within ourselves of our divine masculine and our divine feminine. But before we get there, we got to go through the muck of the ego. And that is not something I'm going to let get in my way anymore. I'm not letting the masculine or feminine earthbound ego energies get in the way with the masculine tending to be completely threatened if they can't see the idea, if the masculine energy can't see it, can't imagine it, telling me all the reasons why it won't work. And then, I, and then the female energy, the earthbound female energy, that because it's a masculine energy game, and we all know that, that is not an opinion. The paradigm that's collapsing is a masculine energy game earthbound masculine energy game. It's rigged and designed for and by masculine energy. All the systems that we've been trying to adhere to, they're collapsing, thank God, but they were created by masculine energy. They didn't take into account the way females work. We did not get equal representation. The feminine energy did not get representation in the creation of those systems, which is why we have to work together to co-create entirely new ways of doing things. And the female energy has had to sell out on itself time and time again, especially the ones that are rising to the positions of power and influence in the masculine game. So, and I'm done tiptoeing around that too. 
if you can't be a woman out there recognizing if you're going to sell out your feminine side and your feminine energy, that's not on me. And if you get triggered in that way, well, so be it too. Because like I said, I'm done playing around and worrying about other people and the magnitude of disrespect that was shown to me by this guy, the magnitude of disrespect and how many times, no man, not cool. And it's gonna get called out, but I'm extremely grateful because this has finally, after four months of hell, finally ignited me within and reminded me of who I am. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of the hierarchy. I'm not afraid of the power because it isn't even about you. It's not about you. First and foremost, this is about me, but it's also about, you know, this, this first round of the, of the episodes, female energy. This is about the divine feminine. This is about rebalancing the energies. And we have been missing the feminine. We've been missing it. It hasn't had a shot. And if there's one thing I'm paving the way for, it's for the feminine energy to have a shot. That's it for tonight. Thanks. Have a good night. We'll talk to you tomorrow.